Jesus Christ, my living.
blessing. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Yeah. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting the battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood.
with the human race. You see, God has all those billions of planets out there, all those hundreds of billions of stars, and it's all God's. But of all the planets in the whole universe, the whole universe stands in awe at the love that God showers on this little planet called the Earth. And I imagine the people who live on other planets wonder why God doesn't sweep this planet of rebellion out into oblivion. We are the only planet, insofar as I know, that are in rebellion against God, and yet in spite of our rebellion, in spite of our disobedience, in spite of our sins, God loves us. That's the thrilling thing about it. And God loves every person in the whole world with a love that is beyond our comprehension. And God proved His love by giving His Son on the cross. If you ever doubt that God loves, look at the cross, because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. That's the greatest illustration of love in the whole world, is the cross. Because God is saying from the cross, I love you, I love you, I love you. You and I were saved by the cross. Our Lord loved us so much that He gave His only Son to die on that cross. Now, love is not feeling. You say, I feel I love Him. It's not feeling, love is doing. Love is a verb. God did something, God gave His love. God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Apostle John, looking at that cross, said, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. And when you look at that cross and think about it, that the Romans used the instrument of execution on a colossal scale, and they put nails in the hands and spikes in the feet and spat on the people and mutilated the bodies, broke their legs to help them die quicker, and all sorts of terrible things. The most cruel death in the whole world is the death of the cross. Our Lord was hanging there with the mocking crowd making fun of him. And he hung there for you, for you, for you. And God was saying, I love you. Jesus laid down his life for us. And that's the reason the scripture says there's no other way to heaven. You can't be saved any other way. You cannot find life with a capital L any other way. You cannot gain entrance to the kingdom of heaven without coming to the cross because if God could have found another way, He would have found it. It's God's love. It's so deep and so wide and so high and so great and has such dimensions to it that no words in any language can describe it. It's a love that God has for you that in spite of the fact that you were rebelling against Him, in spite of the fact that you were a sinner, in spite of the fact that you broke his laws, he gave his son to shed his blood. In spite of everything we've ever done, God loves. And words cannot describe it. From this moment on, I want him to be in control of my life. I want him to sit in the cockpit of my life and run it and direct it. I turn my life over to him too. Have me completely It 
John chapter 6 verse 57 Just as the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. Lord, love my God. 
was strong enough to come and fight for me to go through hell and down into the grave and raise me up to see you face to face you raised me up to see Let us pray. Our loving God, we come to you at this time full of happiness, praise, and thanksgiving in our hearts for once again gathering us tonight to experience your holy presence. Thank you for this day, O Lord, and we hope to encounter you in a special way in our singing, in our meditation today. Bless and inspire us, Lord. Bless us with your holy presence that we may be able to gain the love that you have shown to your disciples and to us. As we celebrate the Love Sunday today, O oh Lord, make it our language every day. And as we continue praising you with our songs, let it be according to your will and purpose for us. We offer this time of worship to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for tonight is taken from John 13, verses 34-35. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The second reading, 1 Corinthians 13.13 13. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three and the greatest of this is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good evening, my name is Satanan. Welcome to our youth worship today. Today we give emphasis and celebrate Love Sunday. Because tomorrow is Valentine's Day, the most awaited day for many couples. It seems like you will hear a lot about love probably for the whole month of February because we know how sentimental we become when we talked about love. There is so much being said about this word. And now my dilemma is how to preach this overused theme. I am a little hesitant about speaking about this theme because I feel like I have less to say. Or should I say, there is nothing new. But I took the challenge and probably I will try my best to send a message which I can resonate with you and hoping to bring us something to challenge us in our conventional way of loving. Let me share to you my experiences. When I was a child, I seldom hear my parents say I love you to each other. I grew up in rural community and verbally talking about love is not that common. But though I do not often hear them say these words, I know my parents, they love each other. My mother would prepare coffee in the morning for my father, and my father would gather water from a nearby well, and we eat together. In my community also, in our neighborhood, it seems like we know each other very well. We know all the people in our neighborhood. We exchange food, we ask malungay and lemongrass from our neighbor's garden, and we share a cup of rice to those who have nothing. I knew then it was love, and I've learned love this way, in a communal way. Now when I am adult, I have seen the other side, the other kind of love. Usually when we talk about love, we commonly refer to a kind of love that is expressed in romantic way between couples, partners, and our significant others. But we know this kind of love is limited in essence. I've been married for three years, and I should say every day is a challenge, and we're expecting more challenge to come in the coming years. But then my husband jokingly reminded me, you know, you know getting married is fulfillment or it fulfills the command of God to love your neighbor. As he said, your partner is your closest neighbor that you can love and you should love. I know we have different definitions about love depending or according to our own experiences. And in the Bible, Paul is the champion when we talk about love. He is the most quoted writer and in fact, he is cited many times in weddings, even in other um, celebration of love. And the entire scripture actually is also full of recorded verses explaining about love. And as Paul described this word, as the greatest of all. Today, I chose the text in the Gospel of John to remind us once again about the importance of this word and how it relates to us, especially to the new commandment given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Here, in our text, Jesus gives and simplifies to us what is our identity as a disciple. Now, it is interesting to note that the context of this text is quite dramatic. When Jesus spoke these words, it was during the night of the foot washing. You know, I think the most shocking moments for the disciples is to see Jesus washing the feet of the disciples because for them, it's the slaves. It's only the slave who will do that. It was also the same night when Jesus foretold the betrayal and the denial of his disciples. So imagine, Jesus taught us love. Jesus taught his disciples to love, even in the midst of doubt, fear, upcoming betrayal, rejection, and 
death by the cross. No, he taught and commanded them to love one another despite the imperfection and the eventual brokenness. He knew about his eventual suffering, and as he contemplated leaving the disciples all on their way own, his main concern was for them to love each other. It was a new command, because while love had been focused, the focus of some of Jesus' earlier command, like love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, love your neighbor as yourselves, love your enemies. Now here, Jesus based the love that they are to have for one another the way he loved them. His concern for the disciples is to love one another, and it has a special motive actually, where the next verse says, Love one another, so that the world will know that you are my disciples. It is ironic to talk about love when you know that some of your beloved friends would betray you, reject, or even deny you. How would you feel about it? How would you feel when the person you love the most will betray and reject you? Jesus must have been broken. Even the disciples too, they are broken and hurt because Jesus keep on telling them that I can I will leave you and you will be left alone. But the question is, how can then we love when we are broken? And hurt. Loving in the midst of brokenness is something that we must learn as a disciple of Christ. Jesus shows us to love his disciples despite the fact that they are too broken, they are too doubtful, and too fearful. Jesus shows us to love them despite their imperfections and little faith. Not only that, Jesus loves not only his broken disciples, his imperfect disciples, but also those broken people as well. Who are they? They are the sick, the lonely, the outcasts, the sinners, even the enemies. So this is how Jesus loved. This is the way of Jesus' love. And now here in our text in the Gospel of John, he then asks us to love one another as the exact way he loved us. Can you imagine that? This is heavy. I never thought of loving as difficult, as challenging as it is, because we are to love others the way Jesus loves us. Jesus asks us to love those broken, those imperfect, and those hard to love. Let me share to you a simple story. I love collecting stuff and recycling things. And then one day, while cleaning our stock room, I found this mug with an angry face. I found it cute, and so I tried to use it. But my husband did not like it. He said that the mug seems so angry, and he doesn't like looking at it because it annoys him. He wanted the mug to be kept away, to be kept aside. And so, I kept it. And then while attending to my indoor plants, I got an idea. That unwanted mug, the angry mug, I made it like a pot and put some plants in it. When my husband saw it the next day, he kind of bit like it, I think, or I guess, because he allowed me to put it in one of the corners of our house. Another is, we have this couple mugs given to us by Sir Saul and Mamtelma Aplaon. I like those mugs because it has our names and it's like a personalized mug. But then we broke the handle. But the mugs are so sentimental to me that I cannot throw them away because they were gifts. So what I did, I turned it again like little pots. I put some plants in it. I personally like plants. I love propagating plants and put it in almost every corner of our house. Isn't it cute? Well, I find it cute. But what I'm trying to say here is that we can embrace brokenness 
and there is still beauty in brokenness. Those broken may be hard to fix, hard to change, and hard to bring it to what is original, but those broken can be valuable again, and they can be loved. In the gospel, many broken people keep on coming to Jesus, and of course, Jesus is willingly healing them, accepting them, and making them whole again. The sick, the sinners, the poor are broken. Yet Jesus embraced them and made them whole. Jesus also loves and embraces his disciples amidst the fact that they will leave him as soon as the situation gets worse. Here, Jesus commanded us to love our imperfections and others' imperfection and try to make them new again. Though broken, yet we know being loved by God. God loves and heals the broken. It is a constant theme in the Bible. So what is then the love that God wanted us to emulate as Christians, as disciples? Jesus then redefines the usual and traditional way of loving. To love means is to embrace our imperfection, our brokenness, and to embrace the broken, and to see that those broken are not entirely useless or bad and incapable of loving and being loved. Love then makes the broken beautiful. The gospel also invited us to see who are the broken in our communities, in our society. Think about those broken in our community, and I am sure you will find many. And let us see how we can love them just as Christ loved us. There is so much out there that needs our love, the kind of love that Jesus has shown to us. We are not only to love those we like or those who do something good for us, but also we are called to love those unlovable, those we see as enemy. The disciples might have asked, if how to love like Jesus, how to be like Jesus. How has Jesus loved them, by the way? Well, he has served them, like the foot washing event. He has kept them with him in his entire ministry, patiently teaching them, training them, empowering them, saving them by choosing them, and by what he knew he was ready to do for them on the cross. The cross is the ultimate expression of the love of God. Friends, the love of God is for the broken and imperfect as we are. And so let us embrace our own brokenness and be assured that though we are all broken, imperfect, and undeserving, we are capable to love and be loved just as our Lord Jesus Christ loved us. Though Christ is no longer physically with us, we can still make his love visible and real to us and to others. We may ask, so what does love look like today? If we will base this love in Jesus' way of love, should I say love looks like food to those who are hungry? Love looks like healing to the sick, shelter to the homeless. Warm embrace to those outcasts and lonely, forgiveness to the sinners, respect for all, including men, women, children, and the minorities, compassion to the poor, and justice to the oppressed. This is how love looks like. As Dr. Colonel West once said, Jesus, justice is what love looks like in public. Friends, now imagine, I want you to imagine, Jesus would say this commandment to us today, this time. Love one another as I have loved you. So how would we respond to this command? How would we redefine our love and make it more relevant, simple, and real to us and to others these days, especially in these critical times? Let us love according to the Jesus way of love. 
because as the scripture says, those who love are the greatest. Happy Love Sunday to everyone. God bless. Amen.
Colossians 3 23 to 24 Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 to 39 for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for men. Matthew 28, 18-20 And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Philippians chapter 2 verse 11 And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Revelation 15 He will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship, for your righteous acts have been in you.
John chapter 1 verse 14 And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us And we have seen His glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father Full of grace and truth Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us to Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, thank you for reminding us of what it means to love and be your disciple these days. We thank you, dear God, for your holy presence, your inspiration and guidance in our worship tonight. Thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, the perfect example of how we must love every day. May your new commandment given to us, O Lord, be made realized through us every day. You have called us to love the way you loved us, and it is an honor for us, O Lord, to be called your beloved children. Despite our brokenness and imperfections, we know you love us, Lord, and your love is at work in us, and we are a work in progress. Lord, help us to learn to love according to your ways, and as we redefine the love today, make it relevant to us. May it be according to your will and purpose for your people. Bless us and help us, O Lord, to be your instrument of love to everyone that we need each day. May we act and speak in love every day. God of healing and grace, we also offer this time to you our prayers of healing and comfort to those who are broken in bodies, in minds, and spirit. Lord, be with us. Keep us safe. And we pray for our young people as they continue in facing the challenges every day. Give them inspiration, courage, and strength, O oh Lord, as they continue their day-to-day -day living, as they continue their learning, and as they continue to be your disciples. Let it be your will and purpose for us, O Lord, be done. And help us to be a blessing to others, to be instrument of your love to all people. We offer this prayer to you, O Lord, in the name of Christ. And now, children of God, go in peace and continue to love. Christ has given us the new commandment, that we love one another as Christ has loved us. And by this, everyone will know that we are Christ's disciple if we share the love with the world. And through this love, all things will be made new. So go and do as Christ commands. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
John chapter 1 verse 14 And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us And we have seen His glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father Full of grace and truth Second Corinthians chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us to Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Yeah. 